very warm welcome to the Mortgages for Business weekly buy to let mortgage market update. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jenny Brown and I'm sales director here. I'm just going to say it, how hot is it? Um, it's very hard to work in this heat, isn't it? Um, but I hear we've got thunderstorms coming, which will hopefully clear things up a little bit and take away the humidity. Uh, in terms of what's been happening in the lending space, it has been very quiet in the last week in terms of repricing and criteria changes, um, which I think is largely down to seasonality. Lots of people are on holiday, um, as best we can be on holiday at the moment. Um, so things are quite quiet in terms of lenders looking to make changes. Um, I think we'll see a um, swathe of changes come the um, September return, but actually at the moment it's quite quiet. However, having said that, there are a few changes which I thought were worthy of mention for you. So first of all, um, Lending Invest has increased its maximum loan size for multi-unit freehold block properties. So they're now willing to lend up to 70% loan to value for £1 million, 65% um, to £1.5 million and 60% to £3 million. In addition to that, they've also um, tweaked their in rent to interest calculation. So essentially the calculation which determines how much you can borrow per pound of rental income um, to make that more generous. So for basic rate taxpayers, they're now working at 125% at 4%. Um, so yeah, really great news there from Lend Invest. Now, for those who aren't familiar with Lend Invest, um, they are a lender who is comfortable lending to individuals and limited companies and also LLPs. Um, they're very landlord friendly. Um, they're very happy to accept landlords with an unlimited number of properties in the background. And they also have some really um, neat um, other kind of um, peculiarities of their lending policy. So great to see those guys still pushing ahead and making positive changes. In the last week, we've also seen accrued mortgages return to um, buy-to-let in terms of first-time landlords. They've been accepting buy-to-let applications, but they've now opened their doors back up to first-time landlords, which they did do a temporary pause on um, as part of measures taken in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, first time landlords are now acceptable up to 75% loan to value, um, which is really great news because what we are seeing is certainly um, first time investors um, showing interest in investing in buy to let properties because of the stamp duty holidays. Um, so that's prompting them to make earlier decisions. So great to see Accord moving um, in line with the market requirements there. And lastly, we've also seen Habito um, do some repricing downwards. So they've reduced their rates um, and they're now offering um, five-year fixed rates from 3.74% and two-year fixes from 3.19% for their limited company range. They've also reduced their arrangement fees. So they now start at 1.5%, was previously 1.75%. So some downward pricing from Habito. In terms of Habito, they're a relatively new lender to the market. Um, they're very much a lender who has built their um, offering around um, service and systems. So it's very much an online proposition. Um, from what we've seen when we've used them, they're very, very quick and efficient to deal with. And they have um, a huge amount of appetite to do business. They are landlord friendly. They don't mind you having large portfolios in the background. They also have some really other neat um, parts of the lending policy as well. So again, really good to see these guys bringing their pricing down to align them um, more alongside their competition. A little bit of housing market news for you now. Um, so the Mortgage Works release a quarterly report which they call their buy to let barometer, which I always really enjoy reading because it gives us a real insight into what landlords are thinking and how they're feeling about the market. Now the research they've carried out for this report took place between the 12th of June and the 5th of July. Now what their report tells us is that the typical landlord has on average seven properties, which represents 8.7 tenancies and producing an average yield of 5.8%. Now of those surveyed, 17% are planning to buy a property in the next 12 months, which is an increase um, up from 5% on quarter one. Additionally, 17% are planning to sell a property in the next 12 months, um, but this is down 4% from quarter one. So what this really tells us is that landlords are feeling more confident about the future. They're looking to increase their portfolios and those landlords who are thinking about um, reducing the number of properties they have are actually now um, thinking again and reconsidering things. That's really positive. Um, most encouragingly, in the report, um, landlords' optimism for their own lettings business has almost doubled from quarter one. Um, so the record low, um, which was recorded in quarter one, has now increased to 37% of respondents now feeling good or very good about prospects in the next three months. 
this week I want to spend some time talking to you about adverse credit. Unfortunately, I expect there to be more people um, struggling to make payments every single month on time owing to the financial pressures that will come out of the back of COVID. And so I think it's worth just investing a little bit of time explaining a bit more about adverse credit and how it works and how it impacts your ability uh, to obtain a mortgage in the future. So first of all, the term adverse credit really refers to anybody with a black mark on their credit file in the last six years. And a black mark on your credit file could be a missed um, credit card payment five and a half years ago. It could be a missed mortgage payment last month. It could be a loan account that's gone into default. It could be a CCJ. It could be um, any other kind of missed payment, essentially. But it covers a really broad term of, um, of, of missed payments and non-payment of accounts. In terms of um, what is acceptable to lenders, anything which is unsecured, um, so loans, credit cards, mobile phones, bank accounts, that kind of thing, which happened over three years ago um, and was a very much a one-off occurrence, lenders aren't going to get too upset about. And actually really even miss mortgage payments if it was one-off over three years ago, people are generally fine with. Um, it would be slightly different if you had someone who had habitually not paid their mortgage month on month in a period of time after three years. But anything really that's just a one-off payment, I think we can kind of largely park. So in terms of what's been happening, if you've got credit uh, issues in the last three years, I think it's worth saying that um, there's no kind of clear answer on this. Um, if you put yourself in a lender's shoes, if someone missed a um, credit card payment two and a half years ago and it was a one-off, and it's the only missed payment in the whole credit report, you're much more inclined to support that borrower than if they had a mortgage pay, missed mortgage payment um, three months ago. Um, because from their perspective, you're more of a risk, you've missed a payment on the type of credit which you're being asked to extend to them and also it was very recent. So I think there's really several things which come into lenders determining um, whether they're going to be willing to lend to you if you have got any kind of credit issues. So the first thing's going to be, what type of um, facility was it that was missed? So loan, credit card, mobile phone, that kind of thing. Secondly, how many payments did you miss? So if you just went one down and then got everything back up to date, that's obviously far more attractive to a lender than someone who went um, three or four months behind. And also when this actually happened, so the more historic the adverse, the better it is from a lender because it means that more time has elapsed. Whatever the issue was then has sorted itself out. In terms of um, who can be helped and who can't, again, it's not a very easy um, thing to um, put concisely, but what we do find is that um, if there's a genuine reason behind a mispayment, and often we see this in context of um, people not moving money from one account to another, so they have the funds to pay something in a bank account, they simply hadn't made the transfer into the one where the payment would come out of, but we can show the funds are available, which is an administrative error. Um, again, lenders are quite comfortable with that if it's kind of a, a one-off thing. If someone has not made a payment because they are really stretched financially and simply could not make ends meet that month, obviously that's going to be more concerning from a lender in terms of whether this person is managing their finances appropriately. But that's not to say that they can't be helped either. So um, in terms of adverse credit and if this applies to you or you know someone who has got a bit of adverse, the advice is very much this. First of all, don't feel that you can't get a mortgage and never will again, okay? That's certainly not the case. Um, we have lenders who can be very flexible um, for the right kind of borrower and right kind of application. So it's not a disaster by any stretch of the imagination. Um, although I would also hasten to add here that for people who have got particularly the more recent types of adverse credit, um, you're simply not going to get a mortgage with the um, sort of high street clearing banks where the rates are one point something. It's just not going to happen. Okay? So you need to be a bit realistic in terms of what's going to be available to you. But if you do have some adverse credit, what you will need to do is get a copy of your credit report and share it with a broker and they'll be able to go through it and really get a feel for exactly what's been happening. And with that, they'll be, they'll be able to approach the market on your behalf, do some research and try and gauge from lenders who would have appetite for this kind of application. And then you can go from there. So if this does apply to you, again, please don't lose heart. Um, do um, get your credit report together and send it over to us. And we'll be very happy to have a look at it and just see how we can help you. So that's it from me this week. Thank you as always for joining us. Um, next week, you'll be joining me from a different location for those of you who are sick 
of looking at my living room. Um, so yeah, I'll look forward to catching you next time. Until then, um, look after yourselves. Please don't melt. And if you do have any questions, please do give us a call 0345 345 6788. Look after yourselves. Thank you.